Hi, I'm John Tabler. Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about something most people really enjoy, which is getting their morning cup of coffee or tea. And you know, a lot of people make it at home and use a ceramic cup, but just as many go to a coffee shop and get their coffee in one of these, which is a paper cup. And so many times people will leave the coffee sit in the paper cup and you know, coffee doesn't taste as good later on, but also the substances in the paper kind of leach off into it and make it even taste worse. And so I decided to take a look at just what is in the paper cup that will actually get into the liquids. And you know, I really got into probiotics and fermenting because of the amazing abilities of uh, probiotics to detoxify and purify your body and take toxins out. And so one of the things when you have uh, toxins in your body or you're exposed to them that is that if you use probiotics on a regular basis, it keeps you healthy and well. And when you drink out of a cup every morning and start your day, uh, drinking out of a paper cup, it doesn't seem like paper should be able to hold hot liquid. The reason why it can hold the hot liquid is on the inside, it's lined with a plastic coating. And plastics really are not good for you if they get into the liquid and you ingest them into your body. So I decided to find out just how much of the plastics and the substances that are in the chemicals that make up the plastics actually can get into the liquid and in, in, be ingested into your body. You know, one of the main constituents of plastics is a chemical called bisphenol A. And bisphenol A is an industrial chemical that's been used to make certain plastics and resins since the 1950s. And it's found in polycarbonate plastics and epoxy resins. And it's known to cause quite a, a, a bit of health problems. Here it says, BPA affects your health in more ways than one. The toxic chemical has been linked to causing reproductive, immunity, and neurological problems, as well as an increased likelihood of Alzheimer's, childhood asthma, metabolic disease, type 2 diabetes, and cardiovascular disease. And so this substance has really been, um, I want to say, it, it's been banned in some areas in, in, of, of ingestible products. You know, people do not want to have it in their, uh, in their containers that make up uh, the food containers or liquid containers. And so many times it'll say BPA free, but what it's replaced with are other constituents of plastics that really haven't been studied to the extent that this one has, which we then find out also cause all sorts of problems. And one of those is an estrogenic activity um, problem from copolymers and resins. And what is estrogenic activity? Well, xenobiotic chemicals, uh, which are or the makeup of many of these uh, plastics, exhibiting estrogenic activity often interact with more than one estrogen receptor and can produce many biological and adverse health effects in mammals such as early puberty in females, reduced sperm counts, altered functions of reproductive organs, obesity, altered sex specific behaviors and increased rates of some breast ovarian testicular and prostate cancers so a whole host of health problems come from plastics and so let's just find out how much of these plastic uh, substances can get into your body when you're drinking from a cup that's lined by them they did a study and it's called microplastics and other harmful substances released from disposable paper cups into hot water so I'm just going to read the highlights and a little bit more of it and you'll get the gist of the study. It's always easy to read the abstract, what's called the abstract and the conclusion in the abstract to really get the sum up without having to read many papers. But exposure of the paper cups to hot water triggered the release of microplastics. Okay, Ions were added into the water through the hydrophobic liners of the paper cups. The analysis of the liners indicates the presence of heavy metals in them. Surface properties of the liners deteriorate, deteriorated after exposure to hot water, and four out of five disposable paper cups were lined with HDPE grade of plastic, which is um, uh, one that really will leach, leach into the, uh, the liquids. And here it says, these paper cups have an interior that is laminated with a hydrophobic film made of mostly plastic, polyethylene, and sometimes copolymers. 
The objective of this study was to evaluate the degradation of these films as a result of exposure to hot water, 85 to 90 degrees Celsius, which is about 185 to 194 degrees, which is hot, which is hot water. Uh, that you're going to be, you know, shot. It's not as hot as boiling, but it's getting getting close. So when you have hot coffee and teas, uh, that hot water will go to work on these liners. Due to the deterioration of the films, ions like fluoride chloride, sulfate, and nitrate were released into the water contained in the paper cups. Microplastic particles leaching into the liquid were identified and quantified. Now, also amazing to find is that toxic heavy metals like lead, chromium, and cadmium were detected in the films, which can be transferred into hot water. Ingestion of microplastics, ions, and heavy metals regularly while consuming our daily dose of hot beverages like tea and coffee can expose us to potential health risks in the future. So, I mean, you know, it's a real spoiler kind of uh, for your morning cup of coffee to find out that you're really ingesting things that uh, aren't good for you and over time can really cause a problem. And what kind of problems will it cause or can it cause? Well, over time, as I read the bisphenol A, um, you saw those, but the other, um, if, if, if it doesn't contain bisphenol A and it contains other chemicals because they've avoided that one and gone into other things that, are in, uh, that plastics are made from that won't leach bisphenol A, these are found to be causing estrogenic activity. And what is that? Well, it says that, uh, it can produce many biological and adverse health effects in mammals such as early puberty in females, reduced sperm counts, altered functions of reproductive organs, obesity, altered sex specific behaviors, and increased rates of breast, ovarian, testicular, and prostate cancers. And um, then in another study it said estrogenic chemicals often leach from BPA free plastic products that are replacements for BPA containing polycarbonate products. Uh, so these things can get into the water and what do you do about it? Probiotics are what you do about it. Probiotics can clean your body, purify your body, detoxify your body, and really keep your body from absorbing a lot of this stuff. And I wanted to show you a couple studies that say exactly that. Right here in this study, uh, well, I've already covered that one. The effect of probiotics, and they give you a couple of the probiotics, on bisphenol A exposure in rats. Now, when they do these studies, they use just a small portion of the whole spectrum of the probiotic. When you make these probiotics with natural things like sauerkraut, um, wine, you know, cheese, and uh, sourdough bread and these type of things you have a full spectrum of probiotics. It's much like the musical scale is on a piano. You have many different notes. Well, when they do these studies, they're only picking one or two or three of the notes to use rather than the whole rainbow of spectrum uh, of the probiotic that is what is in natural probiotics that you uh, create through nature, like sourdough and uh, starter and the other ones that I mentioned. But I wanna read the end of the abstract is that what they did was they gave rats probiotics uh, to find out the effect of BPA ingestion in the rats. And these results suggested that the probiotics they gave them reduced the intestinal absorption by facilitating the excretion of BPA and that these probiotics may suppress the adverse effects of BPA on human health. So that's great to know that probiotics can suppress the adverse effects of something as strong as bisphenol A. Uh, another study said bisphenol A removal and degradation pathways in microorganisms, microorganisms with probiotic properties. And the end of the abstract says the BPA degradation ability of the tested beneficial microorganisms, which are the probiotics, demonstrates the probiotics potential application in the bioremediation of BPA contaminated foods and feeds and provides a means to suppress the adverse effects of BPA on human and animal health. What that is saying is that the probiotics have the ability to actually degrade and wipe out the harmful chemicals completely by changing their structure. Not only that, but they also have the ability to 
cause the body to excrete them at the same time. So it's just a, a, a complete wiping out and excretion of them um, from your body, so much so that they're talking about that BPA in instances when it's contaminated food and feeds that these probiotics can rescue those feeds and make them uh, not toxic any longer and also uh, the effects on human and animal health can really alter that and change that for the better and so these probiotics are are so strong in nature that they have the ability to completely wipe it out take it away and do that for your health. One other study was found where they gave uh, where they gave BPA to fish, and at the same time, they gave them probiotics. And it says this study represents the first evidence related to the use of the probiotic they list there to improve reproduction and open new fields of investigation regarding its use to reduce endocrine endocrine disrupting compound impacts on health they found that when they gave it the probiotics to the fish it completely purified them basically and so that's what's really important with uh, probiotics is purifying your body and you should always take them on a regular basis but at the same time you should not ingest things that are going to cause problems and harmful effects on your body which unfortunately plastic cups have a plastic liner in there that really gets degraded really fast by hot water and causes the ingestion into your body my solution i guess would be <laughs> you know you don't you're gonna have a yogurt in one hand and a coffee in the other <laughs> that's probably not going to be the best thing what you should have in one hand is a ceramic cup and have your coffee put into that or quickly remove it from the uh, paper cup and pour it into your ceramic cup in your car if that's the case uh, that would be that would be much better but definitely take your probiotics which means make your sourdough and the many other products that I'm going to show you how to make on uh, on this channel and so if, if you like what you've seen and you're learning something hit the like and subscribe down below and I'll see you in the next video